listening to the Truth Be Told podcast from Trillmatic.com. Trillmatic.com. What it do, man, is your boy you, you, and this is the Truth Be Told podcast. And I'm here with your boy, Reefa. Reefa's in the building. Reefa's in the building. Um, this is like going to be, you know, this is like one of our first few podcasts. Um that we've done that we're doing yeah. uh, we're really excited about this we um, um we got some stuff happen yeah. we got some cool shit lined up shake things up yeah we got some cool shit lined up b <laughs> we got some word cool up shit. word son um uh, you like east coast music uh, yeah yeah, I, I feel, I'll be feeling these because I like their beats. They got some good beats they just so beats. everybody just so everybody knows we're, we're based out of texas you know what i'm saying so um we have a different outlook on east coast music yes, than definitely. than most people would you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying um we're used to the south you know yeah i mean um True. i mean when did you get into when did you probably get into east coast music man east coast music i got into it really i got into it back when oh back in the day you know i mean way back with l cool j and all that you know like the you old was, old music, I used to get into that because my brother's a little older than me, so he'd have some music. And we'd, you was we'd really jamming it. LL, bro. And back in the day, some old LL. And I mean, mom just said knock you out. Who wasn't listening to that? I know? wasn't. I wasn't nah, listening to it. No. Well, I, was I mean, I mean, that. I heard it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. it wasn't like I was like, oh my god, LL Cool J. I mean, I've I've heard it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I yeah. wasn't. It wasn't like mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm I know. Yeah. It, before I my time and stuff like that but i mean when i really got into the i mean that was because my brother was putting me on it but other than that like when i got into it, it was probably around the east coast west coast drama is when i really started hearing it It kind of helped them in a sense for me because i was getting rushed into it like they were making me hear it you know what i'm saying yeah was getting flooded the radio it was biggie it was tupac you know so then i started getting into that and i mean like back then that's when i really got into the east coast i mean didn't matter about who was better who was not it was me it was your music you know when i got into the east coast bro huh. motherfucking dmx i had all his albums so yeah he got me hyped too <laughs> dmx was lit yeah, you know what i'm saying definitely. i remember you know i remember the whole like uh the rough, rough riders era movement. yeah the rough rider movement was really big yo it that's, was that's fire pretty, that's pretty much when yeah because with the locks and all that yeah it's when i really got into the east coast hard the locks had there was a campaign going on because the locks they used to be signed to bad boy and there was this whole campaign where they were trying to free the locks from bad boy yeah. and get them signed over to to rough riders and it was tired, just, tired of wearing them shiny suits and stuff you they know? got tired of that shit they yeah. was like nah we hardcore from yonkers <laughs> yeah that ain't no so, and uh they didn't want to do that and then you know when they finally got released they were on rough riders and the rest is history man a lot of people yeah. came out of that shit we had eve eve came out swiss eve. beats swiss beats came out of that no he, he, he expanded a lot off of that so. oh yeah 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 yeah, drag on, drag on. He didn't really, he didn't really, he, you know, did, he didn't blow up as big as he could have. But no, nah, but he was dope though. Oh yeah, his, his albums were hot. You know what I'm saying? His tracks, I mean, singles were good. Yeah, I he remember just didn't stay in it. You know, I I specifically remember the song "Twisted Heat" from I think Volume Two, yeah. right at Volume Two, with Twister Twisted, yeah. and Drag On, yes. and I remember that being a fire ass song. Oh yeah, um, oh, I had all those albums too. The the compilations basically you know, oh yeah like, yeah Rough Riders volume and all that stuff and yeah oh man they were at the height of the whole east but you know what there was there was a lot more going on during that time too you had uh um, you had uh you had ja rule yeah <laughs> you had ja rule and the murderers murder Inc. Murder. yeah <laughs> murder holla holla <laughs> everybody that's ready to get you had all that going you, you know you had jay-z he was coming up with the early Rockefeller days. Yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? Not not super early, but you know, I I remember they were gonna create the super group. It was gonna be DMX, Ja Rule, and Jay Z, and yeah. they were gonna be called like Murder Inc. or something like that. Yeah, like yeah. that was gonna be their their name. Their name, yeah. yeah. And I remember like I remember them having a song on. I think it was Ja Rule's first album. And they had a song on there with all three of them, yeah. and it was fire. I remember being like fire. You know, I think Jay Z had like a line. He was like, 
I have you in the car slumped, Kennedy style with your memory out. And yeah, I remember yeah, that yeah. just being like, I remember being like 10 years old, like, oh my God, he's you know killing it. it. Yeah, <laughs> like, this is dope. But oh, yeah. um, imagine if they would have came out with that at that moment, around that time. I wonder where that shit would be at if they would have done that. That could have been something right there. Jaru probably wouldn't have went like he, all corny. Yeah, he would have had a bit better career. He might have still been relevant to this day. You know, like He might have been. I don't know though. Maybe not. It, it makes relevant to this day. Mm, no, not, 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 I mean, not, not in the way that he, he needed not, him to be. Yeah, not the way that he probably wants to be. You know, what I'm saying yeah. he's relevant for other things. You know. Yeah, man. He he kind of um like uh, I, I mean let's let's just be real. Like D, DMX's like first three or four albums were like classics. Classic, definitely. He was a problem too because he was hitting like. He was like like four times platinum, five times platinum. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Multiple singles. I mean, most like almost the album had like a quarter of the album, if not more than that, was like a single. You yeah. Know? But was, the thing I liked about DMX though was he was uh he was he was he was kind of fucking crazy. Yeah, I think, that's, like what, I think that's what everybody loved about him. Is yeah, that he really didn't give a fuck. He 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 just had a squad of people with him at all times. And, you know, something that you, I mean, it's basically like an army, you know, and you, you went in. It's just everybody had the dogs. I mean, it's what people want to actually see, like, your crew, you're, you're deep, you, you you don't care. You're ready to just fuck shit up, and that's how he was, you know, and he, and then his style, so aggressive. Yeah. That aggressive style was just, it got a lot of, it was perfect to listen to if you're about to play a game of basketball, play, go play football, you know, in sports. Or if you were about to murder somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Go hit a lick. You know, yeah, you're about to go rob <laughs> somebody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you're, you're about to get into something bad. Yeah, you, you, you're definitely jamming some DMX. Yeah, you know, like, so you're, jamming that. you're walking down the street and you see an old lady clutch her purse. and But if you had, like, the, the disc Walkman and you had DMX playing, like, you were just going to rob her. Yeah. You didn't even have to have a gun. Yeah. You, you were just gonna, gonna rob it. You were gonna have a bottle and you just gonna break it on the sidewalk <laughs> and like give me your fucking money, old lady. Like grab it. Yeah, bark at her and shit. Yeah. <clears throat> it was a different <laughs> Where my dog's at. <laughs> it was a different time back then. It was a lot more it was a lot it was a lot uh more was, gangster back then. Yeah, it was wild. You know what I'm saying? I remember um I mean DMX, you know, um I never forget this this line. When I knew he was fucking crazy. <laughs> Right, it was on flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. Okay, just the cover. Just the cover was crazy. Was already crazy, yeah. right? Like blood, blood everywhere. Yeah. If, if, any, if none of you, people, I thought, wow. Yeah, if, if it's any of you, these any of you little fuckers listening to this that were born in like the nineties and later, and you never heard this album, right? Just Google DMX flesh of my flesh and look at this cover. Okay, yeah. and I was like, how old we dog? 10, 11, 12. Yeah, something like that. Right? Oh, and I was just like, oh, my God, I need this album. Oh, well, yeah. Got you know what I'm saying? Tape. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's how it was. And like, um, yeah. I remember listening to, I think it was like the second track, because he, he came in with like a little prayer or something, if, I, if I'm mistaken. Like, just because I love my niggas. Let a nigga holler. Where are my niggas? All I'm going to hear is right here. My Like, he had a little, yeah, yeah, a little yeah, prayer. A little right? Yeah, yeah, and, um, yeah. The next song comes in. I think, he, I, I think this is number two on the album. But I remember the first four bars clear as day. And I remember my mom hearing that shit like, turn that shit off. But he he was like, uh, he said, um, I got blood on my hands because there's no remorse. I got blood on my dick because I fucked the corpse. I'm a nasty nigga. When you pass me, nigga, look me in my eye. Tell me to my fucking face, you ready to die. Yeah. And I'm just like mind blown. Yeah, I'm just thinking, wow. My mom was like, get this shit out of this house. He's got blood all over him. He's the devil. You know what I'm saying? And that didn't make me want to listen to it even more. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, they don't want you to hear it. You're like, oh, I must be onto something. <laughs> yeah. I turned out okay, mom. You know what I'm saying? Oh. I'm not like, you know, a, a psycho murderer. You know, I listened to the DMX. It was okay. I, I survived it. You know? I survived it. You know? survived it. It, didn't, it, may, it may have not made me a better person, but it didn't make me a worse person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And, you know, he was, he was really getting it in, too, because he had the movies and... Oh yeah, he 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 expanded. You know, he oh, yeah. had clothing, everything. You know, they really oh, yeah, he sure they did. doing it. They yeah, he did. It. But he fucked it all up. The drugs, yeah, the drugs killed him. The drugs they fucked him all his up. Career, you know, definitely. Yo, but when you get online and like he was like talking about the Illuminati mm-hmm. killed his career, and I'm like, are you sure it wasn't the heroin? Yeah. 
I think the heroin you know, had like, something to do with it. Yeah, I think it had a big part. Yeah. Know? Just on my... Just on my... That's what I believe, you know? I don't know. Yeah. I believe that. I don't know. Uh, I don't know anybody that's done heroin and was able to, like, just skate past, you know? Except for Robert Downey Jr., but other than that... <laughs> I don't know anybody that's been able to do like just horrible drugs and just come out of it just okay and still make it. Yeah, like and then no, nah, I wasn't able to last it. Like nah, nah, it was nah. the drugs. And listen, I'm a huge DMX fan. He left a huge impact on my life, but definitely. the drugs definitely took. He took an L. Oh yeah, you yeah. Know what he gave me another lesson. You know, like not only did he help me, like you know, music, you know, getting through things because music was you could really get into it. It can help you through time. You know what I'm saying. He spoke about some real shit, and but when it came to that, then he showed me Paul, how I can't get up. He showed me how the drugs can bring you down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying that quick, and so I mean, if you do look him up, you can, you can take a lesson off of his career and see that how that if how that can affect you in the long run. Getting into those horrible ones, but yeah, I would still go see him live. I, I would too. You know, what I'm even if he was drugged down on heroin, I'm still a fan. That's what I'm saying. Like Big if he fan. if he came and was like, hey, yo, I'm performing like. Three of my albums, the first three albums. I'm gonna be on heroin. I go. I, I how much are the tickets? Exactly, hundred dollars. Sure, I'm no on problem. It. Take my money, X. Take my money and go buy heroin. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's horrible. Yeah, but, I know it's fucked up. But let's be real, guys. He took. He took. Just that's a prime example of why you shouldn't do drugs. Yeah. And if you do, you shouldn't do them that long. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> you know, have your experience and get out. Yeah. Man, what's some other East Coast East Coast cats that you like, man? You know what I mean? Live to I don't know. Jada Kiss was a problem also to me. He was You know he was what great. though? You know why a lot of people if you if you notice there's a lot of people in the South that like Jada Kiss. Yeah. And it's because Jada Kiss was doing a lot of music with artists from the South. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was pushing himself into that and there was and he was um he had uh I remember him on being on a Lil' John album. Oh yeah. Yep. I remember him being on uh it was from the Ride or Die Three, and he had the song with Bubba Sparks. Bubba Sparks, yes, yeah. yes. Like they really was, was pushing him to the south, yeah, into the south. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people from the south say Jada Kiss is dope. Yeah, and he just had that. He had a dope style, definitely. You know, I even like, ah, you know, just get in there. You Yo, know, nobody dirty, can right? do this. Kill it. Nobody could do this laugh like him, dog. Nah. People be trying. Yeah. I don't even want to try. I did I that. And I wasn't it. even really trying. I just did yeah. that just so you, you know what okay, I'm talking though. about. You did okay, though. You did okay. You did better than I would do. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> I kind of dabble with, with people in impersonation, so I kind of, uh, I'm all right. It was decent. You know? That was all right. I give it a seven, eight. You know what I'm saying? And that was not trying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would definitely hit like a three on the scale because I'm just horrible at it, at doing it. And they, I've seen other people, they, they've tried to do it, and it just doesn't. You know, it's just like, nah, nah, it's not Jada, dog. It's not. It's not Jada enough. Yeah, it's not Jada enough. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I mean, he, you know, he had his run, you know. Oh, he definitely um, had his run. Styles had his run, too. Yeah, Styles mm-hmm. did, too. Um, Sheik is the only one that really didn't have it going as big, but he did have it going, too. He yeah, had a little going, bit going. But it, it wasn't as big as the other two, because, I mean, the other two were, they were pumped out a lot better. You know what I'm saying? People knew, people knew who they were from the get-go. You know? Yeah, yeah. And their styles. I don't know. Their styles. She always had that. He had a different style. Yeah. But he'd kill shit still. Yeah. Yeah, she she was a problem also. Yeah. And they, um, uh, and, you know, Styles, he was, on like, he was on a lot of Southern shit too. Yeah. He was on a, a lot of the, uh, I remember he was on Rick Ross's joint. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was a huge, huge joint. You know, it just seems like whenever, whenever these people, whenever Jada and Styles kind of fade, something just happens and they just kind of pop back in. Oh, yeah. Definitely, like, like nothing never ever happened. There's been a few times where I'm thinking maybe they're gone. That's it. You know, I won't, won't hear anything. They're just that underground now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then all of a sudden, bam! You hear them on something. You're like, oh, yeah. They just and pop up out of nowhere on like a hit somewhere. And you're just like, oh, okay. And this is not. It's not done. And, and people still want them. You know, like on their albums. And I would, I take them if I had an album like that. You know, like out there and I could get them. <laughs> What you think about Wu Tang, bro? Was you in the Wu Tang? Oh yeah, yeah. That's another one I was into. I was I was into him, but I was into him as a whole. Uh, I wasn't the only one I was into solo was more Method Man. You know Method Man, Method Man, and you know I I, I listened to a few Rayquans and Ghostface Killers. You know what I'm saying? But Ghostface is G dog. It's definitely Ghostface is a beast. Listen, y'all. If y'all are out here listening to this podcast and y'all at work right now, get on your Apple Music or your Spotify <laughs> and turn on some Ghostface Killer while you're at work. And I promise you, just listen to like some of his. Like, let me think of like a good album that he did. Just 
uh, like uh, Pretty Tony. You know what I'm saying? Dope, was, yeah. Is that an album? I don't know. I know, I know, I know uh, I something to do with Tony, but I think it's it, yeah. also um, Fish Scale. That was Fish that was, was good. That's, that one, was fire that's album. when I was uh, jamming, definitely. Yeah, just listen to some to some old Ghostface while you're at work, and um, yeah, it'll like take you to places, man. Definitely, you'll you'll like like you'll be pissed off at your boss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you're at work, especially you work in the office. Boston team, you got earplugs on, you listen to Ghostface. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you might fight. That's right. Get you right. Get you in the mood. Yeah. <laughs> to make it happen. I mean, for Wu Tang, man, I mean, uh, I, there was Raekwon, it was Ghostface, it was Meth. The Rizzo, um, Jizzo. Rizzo, Jizzo, Inspector Deck. No. Oh, they had. There's a few other ones. I'm trying to think. Yeah, man. It, you know, that's usually where you the memory lapses at. Yeah. Around those. Right. Around those where it lapses. You and God. There, and it, you God. There was You God, definitely. Yeah, there was a. Uh, uh, no. Yeah, but there was there was a you know Red Man is like an honorary like member. Yeah, he basically is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. there is because Red and Meth are so close that it's like yeah. he's always on their shit already. Yeah. He's featured on some of their solo albums. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wonder what uh you know like I seen um uh did you see um Riz's movie? He did. Uh, man with the Iron Fist. Never, no, I never did watch it. <laughs> I don't know uh, it's, it's an interesting movie, man. Was yeah, uh, I mean they're all right, you know. I'll just they got the second one, which came straight to straight to DVD, yeah, straight to to like, Netflix or whatever it was, yeah, and um, yeah. I watched them. You know, they're, they're okay. Yeah. Um, it's that Shallow Monk style. No, you know how they are. It's, it's weird because they, they he tries to mix everything in together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like with hip hop too, so yeah, exactly. It's, it's kind of uh, it's kind of strange because when you, you normally watch movies like this, there's um, there's a, the music. You know, is it really like hip hop? Though I'm not saying yeah. it's all hip hop, but well, see, they kind of he's just like doing a reverse role because when when it came to Wu Tang doing when they're just doing music, you know, and you know, RZA was out there doing producing and all that stuff. They were always incorporating movie scenes like. Old Shaolin and oh, yeah, like yeah. karate, all that type of stuff, you know. Yeah. And he put that, and now that he's got his movies and stuff coming out, he's incorporating the hip hop into it. So it's like a reverse role now that he's actually. He's, I don't know if you think of it like that. Yeah, no, I feel what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, they're also kind of low budget. Oh yeah, you know yeah, man? yeah. I think the so choreography I, isn't really there, and and I don't really think that and, he's kind of doing that on purpose honestly I think that he would do that because he's trying to keep it old school kind of old oh yeah yeah old uh, you know Asian feel you know like them old you can't get they don't, they don't give you too much money man you know so, yeah you, know, but, you gotta work with what you got yeah you gotta work with what you got yeah you know what I'm saying definitely but yeah I mean Rizzo he, he's he's you know I, I mean he's done, he's done the scores for a lot of other movies too so he never oh, yeah. really, like just died away then I know he did like a couple of Quentin Tarantino movies. Oh yeah, yeah, he did that. He did some of those. Yeah, I think he did Kill Bill. Did he, I believe he was a, he was affiliated with it. Definitely, Kill Bill was fire. Love it. Yeah, own it. <laughs> and I hear they're doing another one soon. So now they said they're not nah. going to do that. Yeah, yeah they said they're nice. not going to do it. It would have um, been nice. They were trying to because they were like waiting for the daughter to grow up. Yeah, Vivica's daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then she can come so out. But they were actually waiting for her to grow up in real life. So she could use the same could, person. Yeah, they could use the same yeah, person. Yeah. Which to me is like, it's not really that serious. Yeah, you don't have to use the same person. We don't have to do that. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you could have a older this person come that in. looks a little like her. Similar, yeah. yeah it's okay. They do it all the time. They do it, do it all the time. All the time. So, yeah. Like, I'm watching the, the, the trailers for Independence Day, and, you know, they're using the, 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 the little black boy that was yeah. Vivica's son. Yeah, yeah. They're not using him. Nah, they're not using they're the same using kid. They're not using some other kid. Whole other it kind of looks a little bit like Will Smith. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Bring that not, look to it, but yeah, yeah. Plus, no plus child, plus child stars usually are on here when you crack like. <laughs> they usually do. I don't know what happens to child stars and why it's does that. It's bad. I don't know if, they, if, if if it's given to them like it's candy or something. I don't know. Like good job after this movie. And they, yeah, here's your heroin. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's horrible because it happens too often. What were some? Now listen, let me tell you something. As a, as a southern person, okay. In, in in the southern hip hop too, yeah. we we catch a lot of flack from the east coast, shitting on the south, yeah. telling us that we were trash with doo dooing on our bars or whatever the hell it was. Yeah. Okay, but they would have, but they would literally be be saying this 
and have some of the wackiest motherfuckers ever behind them. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, they had memes. This is why I'm hot. Okay? And they be talking some mad shit about this. It's like, for you know, like, you didn't buy uh, Flip Star's album. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is that what his name? From Flip Mode? Flip Mode. What was his name? You talking about the other dude? Like, his, the, the, his, his, his companion. Yeah. <laughs> His fucking his sidekick. His sidekick. Yeah, I can't think of his name. This is Flip Star. A Spliff Star. Spliff Star. Spliff Star. Just pop That's what it is. Spliff Star. Yeah, nobody bought his album. No. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he came out with an album, but. I think he ended up doing he it. He probably did, he did, right? Because everybody came out with an album back then. I think he did, and yeah. Yeah. Didn't, didn't know about it. Yeah, don't act like you really enjoyed all of Flip Mode Squad. No. Or you bought all of Terror Squad's albums. Not exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't buy all those guys' albums. Nah, you you stuck to the, the the main ones, and if you if you felt somebody that was a part of it, you might go get their album. You ain't getting everything. No, no, there was some trash that came out of the yeah. East Coast. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard to get a whole squad, you know, and everyone be fired. You know what I'm saying? Because it, se- it seems like it's hard to for them to do that. Like they must have. These must be some of their friends that just wanted to be a part of it, and they're like, yeah, all right. That's yeah. what it was. It's like, all right, you're all right, so we'll let you. You can be a part of it. Yeah, like Ja Rule, you bought Cadillac Ties album. Yeah, exactly. Black Child's album. Not happening. You know what I'm saying? It just didn't happen, fool. Like yeah, a lot of those other rappers were, yeah, wearing their albums were selling. Nobody, mm-hmm. nobody cared about the, you know those people as much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So don't try to act like might. the East Coast is just all like this all great. Music, exactly. you know what I'm saying, yeah. and then now you listen to like a lot of East Coast. It doesn't sound anything like East Coast music Not at all. I mean, to me, when it came to East Coast music from from my time, from our time, it was about it was wordplay, vocabulary, you know, storytelling. Mm-hmm. Like they had all that in like all in their albums, yeah. all over. Everybody their had it. That the wordplay and like the vocabulary was ridiculous. Like. Hey, I, I learned words listening to East Coast music, you know, back in the day. Especially Wu Tang. Wu Tang, especially. They, they, they really, they pump, they pump that. <laughs> My philosophies, and animosities, Socrates, <laughs> and all that. Yeah. Okay. It's like okay, triumph. No. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, that that type is what I had back then. That's what I got get from the East Coast. Now, it's I don't get that from the East Coast. No, because anymore. the people that are running the East Coast all sound like Southern rappers now. Yeah. Right. You got ASAP Rocky. Sounds like he's from. He's got a lot of Texas. Like he's from Houston. Houston. There. Yeah. You got French Montana. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And then you got, uh, you know, and the only and here's what's crazy thing. One of the, the few people that actually sound like an East Coast rapper still is Joey Badass, and they don't even like giving him his props. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, well, this is what you were talking about. You wanted like a real sound East Coast yeah, guy. Yeah. He sounds like. He was literally put into a time capsule from the nineties <laughs> and brought out today. He sounds like he's and from he's the East from Coast. Then. Yeah, yeah, and he's an East Coast rapper. That's, that's when you hear that. You're like, no, that's East Coast. Yeah. You know, some of these rappers, you hear them and you don't know where they're from. You're gonna assume they're from the South. You seem like, oh, yeah. that must be a, a new South rapper. Everything's so homogenized now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, you know who has kept their sound? West Coast is, big. especially the Bay Area right now. Bear is popping right now. They they, they, and, they have their own style, and it's it, and it's theirs. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't even really can't, copy that. Can't. I think I've heard a few try, and yeah. and, it, and that's that's how it is. Like I don't even remember who they are because doesn't really sound right. Doesn't sound right, and it's like nah. What do you think about all these people that's that's using Texas? Like they be they, like I, I, like especially like East because they've been stealing a lot of Texas. Let me tell you what I hate the most, and I blame Drake for this. All these people that came out with albums and mixtapes or songs yeah. that, I guess, show love to Houston, right? So they're like, screw with the jam, yeah, yeah. Put like, oh, they talking about some lean in there thing. or whatever, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then that's it. Then they dip the hell off. They never do a song with somebody from Houston yeah, yeah. or anybody from Texas, period. And that's it. Yeah, it's almost like, like they just used us. to Like a crutch to... to... Yeah, to get us. Because you know, like, like, Drake started that. Yeah, you know when he did the "So Far Gone," he had exactly. the, the song with the Houston and whatever, and he kind of painted Houston in this particular light, and everybody enjoyed it. And now everybody does this one Houston song on their album. Mm-hmm. Everybody's done it, 
like, Kendrick and yeah, like, Wale. Yeah. Everybody's done this one Houston song album. Yeah, dedicated to Houston type thing, like yeah. for their Houston fans or whatever. Like it's just, it's I think it's a, it's like a, a stepping stone. Like, yeah, these days that's what it's like. It's like, it's like you, you're not a real artist till you do this Houston song. And like, and that will that'll take you to the next level. Yeah. Like once you do that, then. because apparently we're just so stupid that it's like, oh my god, he made a song for Houston. He's gonna we're gonna like buy his albums. You know what nah. I'm saying? Like not me, motherfucker. Nah, not me. Uh-uh. You know what I'm saying? I see right through that shit. If you're gonna really hold Houston down, you really love it, like you say in this fucking song. Put yeah. somebody from Houston on that bitch. on that track. You at, know what at I'm least saying? On that track, you would think you'd have a Houston rapper spin on there because you're talking about Houston. Yeah. You know, and nah, or at least a Texas rapper, or something. some sort of Texas rapper. Like, there's yeah. a lot of young up and comers that are that are hot that From are all fired. around. Yeah, and we're you know influenced by Houston itself, like their style. The, 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 you know, that's where it's really based out of because the rap a lot. A lot of people put it like that. Like, yeah. it's the heart of the Texas rap. But it, yeah, it just people don't. You know, people are using it, and people don't uh, don't realize that it's just being used because yeah, they're not they're not actually celebrating it as a whole because they ain't putting nobody on nobody's getting put on because that could actually benefit a houston rapper you know yeah yeah, yeah especially someone of drake's caliber go out there there's so many people he could have put on something. from houston yeah he swears like houston is like his favorite city in the whole world mm-hmm. but he hasn't done anything with houston rappers since he came out yeah you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah in the beginning probably yes yeah, it's just like oh my yeah, god but, do, but since yeah. he's been up at this level that he's at he hasn't came back to that. You he ain't putting on nobody from Houston. Other than talk about it, but don't yeah. show the love. Like, He'll bye. come to the concerts. He'll, you know, yeah. maybe bring a Houston artist out of the concert. You might see yeah. Bumby at the concert or whatever, but he's Where's not the feature? Him. Where's the feature? Putting him on, really, really promoting. Really yeah. Help him out. Put Paul Wall on the song. Yeah. If you're really about this shit. For real. You know what I'm saying? Back him up and get on his album. He gets on your type stuff. Yeah. You know, like, Put on Slump Duck. You know what I'm saying? And nothing. Nothing. I mean, so many artists that, I mean, you can put on from Texas, period. Yeah. But There's a lot of new guys coming up, too. There's, like, the Sauce Twins. There's, um, uh, what's, the, what's the guy's name? Uh, I can't think of his name. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of cats that's really on the come up right now yeah. in Texas. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it's, it sucks because Texas went through this, this little, where everybody kind of stole the slang. And, you know, they, they went through all this shit. Yeah. We literally got a lot of shit stolen from us, and oh, they don't give us no credit or whatever. But and then you have these new artists that come in, and they can't get any love because they're trying to push the sound to a different different direction. So you have the the old Houston that doesn't like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, or the old yeah. Texas that doesn't like that, and then you have the the game not showing any love to Texas because of how they feel about the old Texas. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly, yeah. So these new artists that are coming up, they're kind of like stuck in this little limbo here yeah. trying to get on. You know what I'm saying? But listen, listen, y'all. I think that if y'all really want to get on, you got to go to the Bay Area. <laughs> Pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Or to the East Coast or, you know, because that's the only way you're going to really get put on, man, because they're, they're not showing love. They don't show us love in Texas like they would like in L.A. or like in New York oh, yeah. or Miami. Definitely. I mean, it is, but in the, on the rap side, they don't they don't give us that love for some odd reason. I don't know. They still are sound all day. Yeah, they don't. They hate. They they say they hate us, but then they love what we do. Basically. Everything that we do, right? They sip the lean. Everybody, everybody sips. Everybody sips yeah. lean. Now. Yeah. Like I, I was listening to Futures. Um, no teeth. You know. Yeah, they got everybody's got grills. I was listening to um what what um I forget which Future, but on the song he said something about Yellow Tusk. Yeah. Okay, on a song. He said something about Yellow Tusk. Now, these fucking kids and, you know, all these kids are talking about their siblings. They don't know about Yellow Tusk. Jesus Mafia trademarked that. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> That itch. <laughs> yeah, the itch. They don't know about that. So I know about it. <laughs> yeah, like, it just sucks because, you know, he's from Atlanta. He's kind of like re-putting, pushing Yellow Tusk back out yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but these people don't know this no, shit. Yeah, they right? really don't know about it. They, yeah, just, they probably heard of the different colors there are, and they just say it. Yeah, they probably. Ain't if y'all was really, if y'all, if y'all was really like, like doing this shit like Texans do, trust me, you would know about this yellow tus. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Anytime somebody says yellow tus, I know that they know what the hell they're talking about. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. If you don't, if you be like, I sit, I sit lean every day. But you don't know what Yellow Tusk is? You don't sip lean every day. Yeah. You don't sip lean, cuz. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. This is what it is. 
Uh, that, that 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 syrup is uh, something else. But yeah, man. But yeah, it's just definitely started. Uh, Houston really pumped it out, and what ruined it is when they put it into albums and, and music. When they did that, that's when it really got out there too much for <laughs> everybody. That now everybody and their mama was talking about it, and knew about it. You know, I mean, what ruined it. Is, I think it was fucking Lil Wayne. Yeah, well, yeah, he took it. He took it to the next level. Just putting it out there was bad enough, yeah. and then that was kind of just sharing it. But then, one, yeah, Lil Wayne really took it to that whole. This, this, he really overpopularized a lot of shit. He overpopularized the Bloods. Yes, you yes, know what I'm yeah. saying. Like yeah, they made that. Like I remember everybody wanted to so much after that. And there's so much speculation on him on like, whether or not he is. He is yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Who knows? <laughs> crazy. But yeah. I mean, and it, I mean, just yeah. Period. I mean, just him, him himself, kind of being the star he was, and so many people listening to him. And just on him, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, they just, he, anything he said, they do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? If you're talking about sipping syrup, yeah, people were sipping it. You know, I'm skateboarding, and we, all of a sudden there was a new generation of skateboarders, you know, like, that's right. That's right. I mean, everything, like, he, the dreads, he, you know, everyone started getting dreads. That's true. Everything, face tattoos. I mean, people started doing shit to the next level because really, of him. Because of him. Yeah. Because of him. I mean, he was a force to be reckoned with, obviously. But it, it was bad that it, it was bad that it got to that level because look what's happened. Yeah, I know. It's fucking crazy. We'll have to we'll have to talk. We'll have to get, we'll have to talk about Lil Wayne on another. On another. Uh, yeah, probably oh, might. Yeah. yeah, it might be a whole whole thirty minutes. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we're about to get into the interview now uh, with the boy uh, Tope. Y'all haven't heard of him. He's from Portland. Mm-hmm. Uh, young upstart. You know, uh, what you think about this? Dude? Have you heard, have you heard any? Yeah, of I, was, I listened to it a little bit, and yeah, I like I like uh, like what he's doing. Yeah, it's a good sound, definitely. And uh, I can't wait for this interview so you can get get at some of these topics. Yeah, man, we about to let y'all know about um, Tope, and hopefully, he can tell us a little bit more about this Portland hip hop that yeah. nobody really seems to know about. You exactly. know what I'm saying? And it just seems, seems like, like it's underneath the underground. It's underneath the underground. It really right. is. And hopefully Toby's going to expose some of what actually is going down in this in this scene. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll get back to you guys right after y'all hear this sponsor. Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook. A new social network arises every day. If you need social media branding, the team at First Class Social can handle it. From influencer marketing to new media advertising, we got it covered. Head over to FirstClassSocial.com today. For more info, that's FirstClassSocial.com. All right, man, so we're back, and um, we got the first the first interview, man. We got, Here we, go. we got the homeboy, Tope. He's coming straight out of Portland. You know, yeah. And um, how you feeling, man? Man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to be the first one. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, why don't you tell the people, you know, a little bit about yourself, man? You know, uh, producer, rapper from Portland, Oregon, um, under the name Tope uh, as a solo artist. Uh, started in Portland with a group called Living Proof and another group called T and E. And in the last year, I recently moved down to Oakland, California. But um, I guess most recently known for my album Broke Boy Syndrome with Blue and a couple other people that kind of broke through last year on Double uh, XL and Two Dope Boys and Traumatic and some other really dope sites that uh, were out there supporting. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up, man. I yeah. mean, um, before we get into all that, how you feel about the, how, how you feel about the Trailblazers right now? Man, it's really like a heated debate going on right now because because yeah. I've been in Oakland for so I've been in Oakland for a year, and all our local all our local games are Warrior games. So we've been watching the Warriors all season long or whatever. I've only actually seen like three or four Blazer games until the playoffs, and I've been low key like trolling <laughs> all my friends back at home by by rooting for the Warriors. Yeah. But like now, I'm invested in the team. Like they won the they won the seventy three. You know, what I'm saying they got the seventy three and nine. Now I'm like, if they don't win the series, all my trolling is gonna be is Bad gonna fire. go down the drain. But yeah. I didn't think they were gonna face Portland in the playoffs, so it's been it's been tough. But I can't lie, I've been kind of I've been kind of 
I still been trolling people, kind of rooting for the Warriors <laughs> a little bit. Man, I hate the but, Warriors. But Portland, man, they got a young team that's really nice, man. Damian yeah. Lillard, CJ McCollum. And to be honest, what's really cool about those dudes is, like, they've been really active in the Portland hip-hop scene in the last year. Like, they they pop up to shows and come out, and it's brought, like, a lot of excitement to the scene with just their involvement in, the, in it. So that's something really cool to see. Yeah, definitely. Do you do you yeah. know anybody on 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 the Trailblazers? Uh, I mean, I've recorded at Martel Webster's studio, who's like a former Trailblazer. Um, I've done PR for Damien and his cousin Brookfield, oh, and did dope. you know PR for um, Martel's record label as well. So, kind of so, like you know through people, not like not super personal. Not yeah, like yeah. We go hang out or anything. So, talk a little bit about that about the PR man because you've been. You've been, you know, I get a lot of stuff from the Portland area. Like, I'm a little more yeah. hip to the Portland area because of you, per se. Um, I mean, how did that come about, man? Like, you know, the PR side. Well, well, basically, I think it really started from, one, me just really pushing my music a lot to, to blogs and kind of... Um, I worked with a publicist a few years ago that was actually Dom Kennedy's former publicist in okay. L.A., so I really just kind of picked up on a lot of the things that they were doing and tried to put it towards my own music. And people would always just be like, you know, can you help me out with blogs or can you send this to some blogs or how do you, you know, people would always be asking me like how I how I did it. Da, 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 da. So when I moved to Oakland, I, I didn't have a job. I was like trying to, you know, like avoid getting a real job, yada, yada, yada. So I just decided <laughs> to... Um, to to try and do that to try and you know do this uh, as an experiment like a kind of a small company a PR company or whatever so I started just advertising it and and you know I'm still really like experimenting with it figuring out what works and doesn't work with it with it but um, it's rough I think huh? I've, it is it is it is because it's you know it's it's I don't want to overload people with music and you and there's just people are sensitive and and you know and, and even I'm trying to really like find that um the balance of being able to send other people's music without messing up my own plug for music cuz it's like I had a lot I have a lot of good things going blog wise and stuff so I don't want to end up like annoying people to the point where they don't want to post my own music so I'm like I'm still trying to figure it out but I think I have been like turning a lot of people on to musicians from the northwest and other areas you know like it's it's been cool to see that it's been cool to see people um you know their movements grow here and there uh, from my help i gotta really what i wanted to uh also know about man is uh just the portland hip-hop scene as a whole you know i yeah I, you don't really hear too much about portland you don't really hear too much about the artists that come out of there and just the scene as a whole or what style the music sounds like. So, I mean, can you yeah. just talk a little bit about that, man? Just let the people know, you know, what's what Portland yeah. is all about. Well, I, it's 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 in a transitional uh, period, I think. There there was like, you know, a, um, kind of an older generation of artists um, that were doing their thing, like Lifesavers, Sand People, Old Dominion, Cool Nuts. I'm not sure if you're familiar with any of those people, but not. they all had... Um, you know, national success uh, to a certain degree and kind of like cult followings. Oh, yeah. And then there's been artists like um, myself and Luck One, t and and some of those other people that are kind of like in the middle that also helped um, break down some doors of uh, blogs, stuff like that, people that are starting to get recognition. And then now there's even like a whole nother crop of artists that are coming up that are really talented, really making a lot of noise in the scene. And in the city right now is like at its strongest it's ever been for Portland hip hop. You know, they're like selling out shows and I've, I've been gone for a year. I live in California now, but just being able to watch it grow since I've been gone, like people are artists are selling out shows. People's individual movements are growing. Local shows are doing big numbers artists are um being able to headline their own stuff like that so it's it's really cool to see um i guess some of the artists that i could name off the top of my head would be like uh vinnie Dwayne, uh mike capes um mike bogan um stuart villain there's really like so many i, I kind of lock up when it comes down to it um there's really a whole ton of artists that are doing it out in portland um 
and it, and it's and it's hard to design de, uh define the sound because there's so many different sounds coming out of there um yeah but i it mean is, is, def- is the sound like a west coast sound or like what's the what's the full on vibe cuz i mean it's in oregon i know oregon is very close to the west coast and i know a lot of that yeah. probably mixes together i mean what is how would you describe the sound it's hard to say. I mean, I think it has a West Coast influence, but it's not exactly California where it's like you're waking up to sun and palm trees every day. So yeah. it's like more, you know, rainy and dank weed and <laughs> beer and stuff like yeah. that. So it, it kind of affects the sound a little bit. It's maybe a little bit darker, but the production is all, is always like a very heavy focus, I think, on Northwest people because for six or seven months out of the year they're like stuck in their house making beats or doing whatever oh, yeah, because it's yeah. right ra- because it's raining all the time mm-hmm. so like everyone has really good production but um it's hard to really nail down it's like soulful jazzy but then there's also like the trap it's it's really everything man everything you could think of there's like a pocket for it in portland hip-hop you know there's yeah. trap there's soul there's live band type stuff there's all sorts of different genres within the hip-hop scene which is really cool to see there's like there's some experimental artists that are really out there doing doing some different stuff too that's cool um do you think that that because there isn't a a, i guess like a unified sound um that it that would hold back portland because you know when you look at like you know like these other cities that may have popped off right like you Mm -hmm. have you know, you have L.A. and you have like maybe, I don't know, Brooklyn or Miami and Houston and Chicago. And, you know, for the most part, they, they kind of all center around a particular style. And then that style becomes mainstream right. and then the whole city kind of blows up. So do you think that, that because you guys don't have like one unified sound? Um, that, you know, that's a good point. That really could be because when you think about Detroit, you, you know what type of. You know what you're gonna get. Yeah. yeah, when you think about LA, you know what and and Portland, I mean that very well could be a thing. I think it's more of like an economics mm-hmm. of like there isn't really um there isn't people out there investing in the artists to to take whatever sound there is to the next level. There isn't like, there isn't that many labels, there isn't that many people that are gonna help you do anything with your music it's really like people are rapping for a hierarchy of other rappers you know it's like you're gonna meet me you're gonna meet so-and-so you're gonna meet cool nuts you're gonna meet lifesavers you know and it's like it's like you're not really gonna meet like so-and-so the a and r so-and-so the label it's just it's just not it's not developed like that like an industry up there so it's more like a small town of like you're rapping for the rappers fans and writers you know but people aren't really like investing the money but i you know i think you i think you definitely have a point um in that in saying that you know that the sound the lack of one distinct sound could be something that is holding the region back i think i think you have a point i think that happens with a lot with a lot of these different cities man because i think austin is kind of going through that right now Mm -hmm. um because they got a lot of dope artists out there in austin but they don't have really one unified sound that everybody just gets behind and push that and then you know let everything else kind of flow behind it um because you know and and i mean you know there's always the, the situation where maybe that sound does blow up and then uh the sound gets old and then nobody wants mm-hmm. it anymore and then that city just kind of fades away you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's one of those things too, where Portland has been so highly influenced by other regions. Like there was a time in the early two thousands when Portland was really, like, when, before I started putting out music in Portland, it was really influenced by the Bay, and it sounded like a mini Oakland, like hmm. the the like too short E forty kind of like slap beats, you know, like that that type of stuff. And yeah. it was really influenced by different sounds and like. To this day, it it kind of picks from so many different parts that it's like, you know, it's sounded like so many different different cities, which is, uh, maybe in a turn has held it back a little bit. So um, let's let's talk about the Bay a little bit. Um, you mm-hmm. recently moved there. Uh, yeah. How long ago did you move there? Uh, almost almost like a year actually. Like a couple weeks ago was was the uh, no, almost the year anniversary. So the Bay Area is popping right now yeah um definitely i get a lot of bay area music coming through trimac.com like um yeah underground There's... and majors the producers like seems like everybody is on fire right now or they're just moving right now is that why you decided to move to, to the bay 
Well, yeah, it was definitely like a, an opportunity to do things in a in a larger market, um, and and just wanted to try and try things in a, in a different city. I had lived in Portland my whole life and felt like I had kind of hit a ceiling. Like had done a lot of things that I wanted to do and set out to do there and in the Northwest and in Seattle. So it was like a chance to kind of expand my fan base, expand my reach, and and the whole goal was to be able to try and just become a, a bigger artist in a bigger region but but you're right the bay is there's a lot of competition there's there's a lot of really really talented artists and, and at the same time there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of stuff going on down here 24 7 all the time is it like a stark contrast between portland and, and the bay well it's weird because like i th- i feel like west coast cities kind of have a similarity like seattle portland San Francisco, they're all kind of like remind me of each other a little bit. But Oakland is very different in the sense of like there's a lot more culture, there's a lot more diversity. Like Portland's, if you don't know, is the is the whitest major city in the United States, and like (laughs) and it really shows when you go there. It's like there really is a lot of white people there, and it's like. And it's something maybe I didn't even notice until I went out to Atlanta, until I went to Oakland, until I went to these different places. And I was like, oh, man, people are right. Well, I, there is a lot of white people in, in Portland. And, and and just that, there's like, there's more stuff. There's more, it's just different, more you know. Works. So that, that part is different. But also there's a lot of similarities to like, the way, it's just a West Coast city. Like, I feel like if you moved from New York to San Francisco, you'd be like, oh, this is so different. Yeah. But for me, I kind of already had a little bit of a vibe. I had been down here a lot too, you know. So I kind of already had a an idea of it, and and I don't know, you know, being I don't know, music and like some stuff just translates like wherever you go, you know. Some stuff, some stuff translates. Mm-hmm. So it's been it's been it's been really dope. I'm like really thankful for this whole this whole opportunity to be down here. Yeah, that's what's up. So how did you come up with the name uh, Tope? It was like an abbreviation of a really bad rap name, like like when I was really young, like in the lyrical miracle phase, and it just kept getting shorter and shorter yeah. down to tote. So now it's that. But also, my real name is Anthony Tony, so it was kind of like close to yeah. close to that name. So I just kind of rocked with it. I've honestly been thinking about releasing music under my uh, real name recently. But I think we you know, all have. A, okay, because yeah. we. Yeah. I, I don't know if you know we we, we make music too, and. Mm-hmm. Kendrick Lamar kind of changed the game with exactly. the real name. I mean, yeah. people were doing it before, but to get to that level, exactly right, and have your real name is was kind of unheard of before that. I, I mean, it's a kind of a, it's Kanye a cool too. thing, too, yeah. man. If you can do it, like the um, transparency of that is yeah. really cool. Mm-hmm. It's really yeah. cool, and like, yeah, it's. I always get that question, and I have to say that, and I have to be like. Yeah, it's a really bad name, and I'm not about to tell you what it is. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's interesting because uh, the boy Reefa actually found something interesting about this name. There's an actual meaning to it, and it's to drink alcohol to excess habitually. Yeah, yeah. You know, on a regular but basis. But also, it's also like a common name, like a uh, Nigerian name. My girlfriend is Nigerian, and she's like, she's like, when I go back there, there's a bunch of people named tope but it's spelled the same or whatever so it's hella funny like it's like not the best name to google like it's so it's <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> that's interesting though definitely yeah yeah and, and it's I'm, unique i guess yeah, yeah sure. definitely unique definitely and who 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 are the people that inspired you to basically be a, a hip-hop artist and you know just who who do you see uh, who, you, who yourself in like a little bit like who who are you a mixture who you aspire of to be well, I guess first, like, first and foremost, just in, like, growing up in a really musical family. So, like, from the, I, from the earliest I can remember was, like, obsessed with music, getting tapes, getting CDs, watching music videos. Like, that's one of my first memories of just being, like, around music. And my, my whole family's, like, highly, highly musical. Everyone plays, like, two or three instruments except for me and my sister. Like, we're the only ones that aren't classically trained. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's always been kind of like a um, passion for that, but I didn't start till like real later, till I was like seven, sixteen or seventeen, even writing raps and then producing li- later. So, but um, man, I've always been a fan of um, 
West Coast music, like Tupac and um, Too Short were probably two of my biggest influences as a kid. And then later growing up, like Jay Dilla was definitely a huge influence on my sound in general and then wanting to produce in general and just that whole like the whole soul vibe like d'angelo okay, yeah. q-tip um erica badu all that stuff man even like dj quicks one of my favorite you know influences producers and recently like Terrace martin is definitely one of the people I'd, I'd love to work with eventually that's like just embodies that musician and that sound that i'm really like martin's hoping to conquer you know like that's that's really the sound I'm going for. But, like, you know, as, as far as, like, rapper stuff I listen to, um, Dom Kennedy and, and, like, Drake will probably be two of my favorite mm-hmm. rappers, to be honest with you. All right. Yeah. How, yeah. Was it, how was it to collaborate, you know, produce for, like, Slum Village, Planet Asia, you know, some of the other artists you've worked yeah. with? Yeah. Um, how was it to hear your the music on, Asia. Their, on their raps? <laughs> it's crazy man it's it's always a it's always a very different experience artist to artist um with planet asia like was kind of a situation through when i was in the group t and e and g force had a really good re- relationship with planet asia and um he was able to kind of like link those songs up and everything and then later i was able to open up for planet asia and um and meet him whatever you know and and that was cool. That was really like Definitely. one of those one uh, one of those moments where you're like, man, this is crazy. I can't believe I'm on a song with one of those people. Yeah, meeting yeah. Asia was meeting Asia. I would say he's definitely was definitely on his own planet. Um, <laughs> so that experience was a little bit different. Um, Slum Village. That was something that was real recent, and was like, man, I was so happy when I got that email. Like that was a, that was happened right when I moved down here to Oakland, and like was kind of just going through a little bit of uh, adversity with the move and like just you know did I make the right decision yada 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 I get that email so that was something that was really cool and then again they came down here like a month or two ago and I met them and it was that experience was great like T3 and RJ both like man send me some music we're like to hear them say they're a fan of me it, that was a, a crazy thing like man we're a fan like, we, we can send us some beats blah 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 I'm like Oh yeah, no problem. Like, let's get it. You know, it's just that was oh, yeah. so that was like crazy. Those experiences are always like, I don't know. You have to check yourself and be like, man, you just it reminds you of how far you've come. Like, no matter no matter all the struggles you go through, it's like something like that that kind of brings you back to like, man, this is why you do it. Give these little moments. Oh yeah, yeah, it's definitely. But honestly, Blue was Blue, and my relationship with Blue and working with Blue has been like probably one of the best things for my career and like uh to this day like we we talked we talk all the time like we're doing new music together and everything like it's it's gonna be really dope and that's been a relationship that's been that's been huge for me um as far as just like getting out there you know getting to a bigger audience would you say that the experiences of those were the same as the magazine you know being in like the source the double xl and two dope boys all that stuff Man, it, you know they all they all vary. You know, blue was the reason why all those things happened in my eyes. Like, like I had been sending my music to Two Dope Boys for five, four years. You know, like everything I sent, I sent to Shake. <laughs> and then it wasn't until Blue tweeted my music or whatever it was, you know. And then people started catching wind of it. So I really have to like thank that dude. You know. Um, I got into Double XL. We got into Double XL before I met Blue, and but and that was that was, you know, a very very cool thing. And we definitely saw a lot of like people hit us up directly from that on the first time we got into Double XL, and then the second time when Blue helped me uh, with the song, and we got in. That was something that was a huge thing too, because I had like done it on my own, so that felt really good. Uh, yeah. But you know, they're always they're always different experiences. Like even with this last release, like. I've experienced, I put out this Better Place video and I haven't had any majors post it. So it's like, it just reminds you that it's like, none of that stuff is is there permanent. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, you have to put out dope music every time, be as dope as you, as, put out the best music as you can because none mm-hmm. of that stuff is permanent. So it's like, 
I'm even like, you know, even right now, I'm like, okay, well, my next release, I'm like, all right, I'm going to come with that, that heat, you know, because oh, I've yeah. had to like go back to the drawing board a little bit, but it's all good. It's all motivation. It's all humbling. Exactly. Every time, every time. It just reminds you, you can't, you can't uh, expect anything. Oh, yeah. So, man, I mean, um, you also, I guess, gained the attention of Erica Badu. Um, uh-huh. I don't know if you know, we're from Texas, okay? Right. So, Erica Badu is like our queen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> totally. In the hip-hop totally. world, like, it's just what it is. Like, you, you got to respect Miss Badu. So, for you to gain the attention of Miss Badu says a lot. Bruh, believe me. <laughs> like, okay, I was down in Austin, actually. So, I already know. Like, I was in Austin at the OK Player show for South by Southwest, like, literally, like, two months after she saw the video. And I was like, I was done with all my shows. My my whole objective was like, I'm just going to go try and meet Erica or whatever. But I was backstage and she gets off stage and it was like, she had her security. She had Austin police. And then she had like just a sea of people trying to talk to her. You know, she was like the queen in oh, yeah. Texas that, that weekend, you know, like. Literally, yeah. I was right there. I was so close, but I was like, man, there's no way I'm going to get to say what's up to her. Like, I just was like, stood on the side and was like, well, this isn't the time for me. Like, it was so, I, so I got to see it. I got to witness it firsthand, like how much Texas really loves Erica Badu. But, man, same here. She's been like one of my influences since I was a little kid. Like, my mom used to play Erica Badu, like, when I was, like, young, so that's just like something I grew up on and like that whole video that whole experience of her seeing it and hitting me up was like I feel like it was really like an exercise and positive thought like the whole time I was making the video even before I shot the video I was like a crazy person I was telling all my friends Erica Badu I was like I have this idea for this video da 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 like I guarantee you Erica Badu is gonna see it like I don't know how I'm gonna get it to her She's going to see it. Like, I was telling everyone that. Like, I posted it on my Facebook. Like, I was like, I can't wait till Erica Badu sees my music video before I even had it shot, bro. Like, <laughs> no lie. I said this. And then, like, four hours after we posted it, people just started sending it to her. Da, 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 da. And you know how she's active on Twitter or she's whatever. She's very active on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, so she retweeted it. Hit me. She sent us, like, three messages, followed me, and, like, 10 other people and da, da 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 you know it was it was a really cool thing it was like kind of was like mini going viral a little bit for like a couple of days just off her retweet it was it was really a crazy thing man that's cool yeah like erica badu is like i said she's our queen and then we mm-hmm. also got beyonce who's also our queen uh right so uh i mean like i said if you can get the if you can get the attention of Erica Badu and she's like she gives good. you the thumbs up doing something good yeah like you know uh, what's cra- you know what's crazy is when she was giving out her number um during Thanksgiving and I, and I called her and I got through like I got through like instantly actually like hella quick and mm-hmm. we talked on the phone and I was like she was like who's this I was like taupe da 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 like I had sent you a video and she said she remembered me I still don't know if she really did but she was like <laughs> oh, yeah I remember whoa, whoa, whoa. she's like I remember that video and I was like I did, we talked for like a couple of minutes. She was like, "Tell me, call me back and tell me what's your favorite song, whatever." But I, I never called her back. But <laughs> but like it was hella funny. Like I don't know if she really did remember me, but it was even more crazy when I talked to her on the phone and just to like, that was, just the whole experience was oh, yeah. was cool, very cool. Yeah, that's dope, man. Um, now I mean, we gonna go back. You know, I know you were saying earlier that uh, Portland had um, a majority white. Uh, it's a, it's a major, majorly white city, per se. I mean, mm-hmm. talk about that, man. Just being, you know, I, I know white rappers, they have a, the, they have to overcome a lot sometimes. Man. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. it's just yeah. the white rapper. and But then you're being in Portland where there's majorly white people. You might not have to go yeah. through that, you know, that, that, that same, um, you know, have to overcome that, that uh, stigma that I've, a lot of white people, white rappers have to go through. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a really interesting issue and like so for me personally I'm like I think I I think I felt both sides of it to be honest with you to be 100% honest is like I think I've benefited like I've benefited from being white and being in Portland and making music that's like 
I don't really curse. I don't really cuss that much. Da 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 da. Like, and I think that through certain doors in Portland, like people were really open to my music, and and I was one of the first artists to win this whole like best new band thing that Willamette Week. Like, I was the first solo hip hop artist to ever win. They had like two groups on it before or whatever, but I did it from the whole year. I went and played shows with like rock bands and like didn't even play hip hop shows. I signed to a rock label, hmm. all this stuff. And like that year I was like one, the hip hop one, the, um, was like number six in the best new band, which was like unheard of at that time. And now it's like hip hop artists all the time in the town win that like after me now it's like people play all the time on that. All, all the time but whatever that's a whole nother s- subject but it's like so in Portland I feel like there were times I definitely did benefit from that other times I feel like and and this is just me sometimes I feel like my music gets judged a little bit harder where it's like um with my image the type of music I'm making or the sound or whatever the being like oh I'm into soul music or whatever it is like some people be like I don't buy it like I'm not getting it I don't know yeah you know whatever it is so it's like I think maybe I think maybe I've like felt it from both like like I, I would be lying if I say I haven't like seen the the advantages of it and then other times too I'm like I feel like my music gets graded harder or sometimes I have to like work my way out of a um you know like out of a out of a hole sometimes when I'm like the white kid when people are like man I didn't think you were going to be dope like that always happens at my live shows or when I open up for a bigger artist and pe- I, people are constantly like I wasn't expecting that bro like, <laughs> I didn't think you were going to be good like you know whatever it mind. is so you know it 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 happens a lot so so but, I mean do you do you run across the situation of um, you know, being compared to other white rappers, man, where you just like, the, I mean, because I, I know I've done it. Like, a white rapper comes around, yeah. I just like start comparing with other white rappers. I know it's like the, the most asshole <laughs> thing you could do. You know what I'm saying? But, I, uh, think so. I, mean, th- I mean, how do you feel about that whenever that happens? You know what's funny? I think it comes more from like white people than anything. Like, people who are just, they don't even listen to rap that much and they're like, Man, you sound like Eminem. I'm like, how do I sound like Eminem? <laughs> or lately, like lately, uh, it's more. I think it's more like an image thing. And living down in the Bay, like if I wear a, a Letterman jacket and if I don't wear a hat, uh, people will be like, "Jeezy, what's up? Oh, G, oh, Jeezy, what's up?" <laughs> like I get so many G Easy comments. And like literally, I had never listened to G Easy's music until a few months ago. And people were like, "Man, you sound so much like G Easy. You look like G Easy." I was like okay, I got to check out this dude. Like, I got to see what people are talking about. Because he's from Berkeley. He's from down here, too. So, What do you think of Jay-Z? Um, I, I'm, I think he's cool. I think he's cool. I like some of his songs. I like some of his production. Honestly, I'm like, some of his beats, I'm like, I swear I have those exact same sound. Like, like there's a couple of beats on his album. I'm like, I have that drum kit. I know I have that drum <laughs> kit. Like, it's hella funny. Um, he's really dope. If anything, he inspires me to, like, take my music serious. And he inspires me to, um, it, it shows me that I could be popular if I really, really tried and really pushed myself to be dope at this music, at this music stuff. That If anything, he really, like, he inspires me. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I don't really listen to his music that much, but you, I I draw inspiration from him, his his story and stuff like that. So I mean, do you? I guess like um, I know I know you listen to like a lot of different you know artists, or whatever. But I mean, do you look at the white artists and you know? I mean, do you look up to them, uh, or, or is it like do you kind of you know are they kind of like a like a second second afterthought? Like you don't really pay attention because you know like i, I know like a white rapper and he was like you know he was like all over like the white rapper thing you know what i mean like he just knew every white rapper that was coming out like he just knew everything and then you know like the other like one my favorite like, rappers are mac miller yeah yeah mac Lamar, G. <laughs> like no um no what's funny and going back to the other to the other question this relates to the other thing is like even myself i feel like i judge white rappers harder than i would other rappers i'm uh. like i don't even really like white rappers that much that's what's crazy about the whole thing (laughs) that's what's crazy about the whole thing like i'm trying to think right now 
of a white rapper that I that I have on my computer or like that I listen to, and I'm like I'm seriously drawing blanks. Like I'm seriously drawing blanks. Like does Alchemist count? Alchemist counts, right? <laughs> or not Alchemist? I'm sorry. Evidence. Evidence counts. Oh yeah, right? that's I right. Like, evidence. Too, I like yeah. Evidence's raps. Like he's cool. Um, um, there's not that many, bro. Like Logic doesn't even count. He's half. I yeah, and they really, dope. they really count him like he's white too. And I'm like, you know, he's not, he's not, he's not white. Logic I know he doesn't looks really count. white. Yeah, you know, I think, I think, um, I don't think I discriminate, but I don't think there's really like, there's really not one that really does it for me that I can think of, like a white rapper that I'm like think is really dope. Um, I think Mac Miller, like his musicianship is tight. Like he can play the piano really, really crazy, and I'm like. I'm good friends with Macklemore, so I'm like, you know, I'm always, I've seen him come up from like, you know, we did shows 15, 30 people in Eugene to seeing him be like a superstar across the world. So I'm like, always hats off to that. Always, always hats off to him and Ryan Lewis. So, yeah. so you you say you you said you're friends with Macklemore. Yeah, Ryan Lewis and Macklemore. Like Ryan Lewis did my very first photo shoot in like 2007 when he was just a photographer. Like he made beats on the side, oh, man. and he was a photographer. Like he did everyone's photos in Portland and Seattle. He did like my very first photo shoot, and then I've been knowing Macklemore since like 2006, I guess. Like MySpace days, like before mm-hmm. he was. Like, he was popular, actually, back then because Tom from MySpace had put one of his songs, like, a featured song on MySpace, and he blew up, like, then. And then he, like, kind of got into the whole, you know, started kicking it, blah, 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 fell off a little bit, then came back and, you know, really started to take over the whole the whole game, his whole, you know, lane. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Um Yeah. Uh, like I saw him like my last show in Seattle I was opening for J. Ru the Damager and XP who's a, a really popular Seattle uh, Seattle rapper and he's like best friends with Macklemore he goes on like the European tours and stuff oh, wow. and I walk upstairs and um, Macklemore is just chilling like in the dark with like three of his press agents like just he's like what's up bro how are you what's up man? <laughs> I'm like I'm like what's up <laughs> like it was, it was just so we... we talked for like 20 minutes until people started coming up and trying to take pictures and then he like literally like disappeared Vanished. out of there <laughs> yeah it was crazy but we talked about a lot of stuff we talked about pretty much everything Hot 97 Kendrick Talk, he told me the story about meeting Michael Jordan and showing him his shoes. Like he told me everything. It was crazy. Man, was crazy. I, I, I can just picture. I'm just picturing Macklemore right now in the dark, and like taking a a little like smoke bomb and just <laughs> literally like I it was like I walked away. up yeah. and like you, yes, I'd have to explain it, but there's like you know it's like a little it's like a little area and it was all dark and he just like stepped out of the shadow and I was just like. <laughs> What's up, bro? Like, because like, you know, I've been knowing him for a minute, but I haven't, I haven't seen him since <laughs> everything sense. popped off. Like, he literally was like, oh, it, was all, it was all calm and everything. It was hella funny. I have a picture on my Instagram from that night, actually. That's, That's crazy, awesome. man. I mean, um, yeah. uh, nothing that I, I want to touch on a little more deeply was you, you being a producer. Okay, like, have mm-hmm. you been a producer a long time? And I started making beats. Um, in 2010 yeah 2010 so about about six years so were you one of those artists that was like i'm sick of paying for beats that cost too damn much i'm about to start making my own beats exactly that's what happened exactly (laughs) (laughs) we had my first album was produced by a sapient of the sand people and he has and he's like pretty you know he has his own thing going on he still tours and does his own things really dope artist and then um after that, we were like, man, we and but we kind of wanted a different sound though too. I kind of wanted to like make some like s- you know soul sample beats, and like I couldn't get anyone to like make the beats that I wanted. So I was like, man, I'm about to just start trying this. And my friend Devin made beats on Reason, and he kind of just showed me how to chop samples and like let, and lay drums, and like from there, well, went off basically. It was like just went crazy on it lately it's only up until recently uh, to be honest with you i've stopped sampling and i've like gone to composing and like really been trying to 
work on that aspect of it of like um music theory and and doing stuff from the piano and and all that and i'm like i'm having a lot of fun with that and it's changing my whole sound up completely which is really dope yeah that's 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 uh that's cool is it is it because of the the, the terrace martin that you decided to take that route Man, basically, yeah, like, just kind of wanted to challenge myself to be funny. To to be honest, it was um, Bryson Tiller's album. Like, I was listening to Trap so, like, just so much. It's a dope and, album. Like, dope album, you know what I'm saying? And his beats are really dope, but they're also simple at the same time. Like, there's a simple formula, and I was, like, trying to figure out how to make those slower double time B- bpm beats you know mm-hmm. and it just started to kind of click um once once i just did a few things and then and then i've been like watching these music tutorial these like music theory tutorials and it's all been it's all been helping a lot definitely so but, you're uh, gonna go move into a more of an r&b vibe i've been making a lot of r&b r&b joints definitely i'm like trying to figure out how to like you know, I'm still structuring it all. Not, lately, I've been trying to sample and play over it, but like not do it cheesy, like do it the right way. So. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's it's interesting. All my new beats sound way. It's more they're more like R and B trap. It's so funny. It's like it's way different than my old sound at all. And I haven't even like I haven't shopped these beats or really played them for anyone because I don't know what to do with them. I'm like I don't know. I'm like trying to figure out what to do still. So it's interesting. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, as far as like production goes, I mean, who do you who do you see as like? I guess I, I guess who is your main inspiration when it comes to production? Um, I mean, it's all over the place, really. There's so many. Like, I'm such a I love producers, really. Like, I could really go on and on and on. But I guess like at the root of it would be like like Jay Dilla, Mad Lib. Um, like those type of people, um, Dilla being able to like do the sample based stuff and also do the composition stuff was really dope. Um, like recently, like I said, Terrace Martin, I'm always going to be a fan of DJ Quick. Um, K Trinata, like I've been bumping his new album. Yeah, his new album just dropped. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, man, but I really need to hear that. Yeah, it's really good. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. What else was I just about to say? Uh, Jake One up in Seattle. Man, I'd love to work with that dude. He's got some amazing, amazing beats. Um, there's really a lot of, there's really so many dope producers out there. It's crazy. Like, I, I, honestly, I, I do like some of Mustard's, like, slowed down different stuff. Yeah. Like, Mustard can really actually come with some dope beats every once in a while. I'm like, this beat is ill to me. Well, the first um, time I had I had heard of him, that I knew of him, and I was like, "Yo, I'm interested in this stuff." Was on I think it was on Dom Kennedy's. Um, uh, I don't know. He brought like the '90s sample in there with the horns, yeah. and uh, I forget what the song was called, man. When I come around, when I come around, that's like one of my favorite yeah. Dom Kennedy songs. So you knew that, you yeah. knew that, right? I was like, "That's the jam," and I was like, "Yeah, that's hard." Yeah, yeah I like that song. That song is like that. That, that song. was kind of the first time that I was like. I don't know much that I've been doing this, you know, this thing or whatever, but that was when I like was like, let me pay attention. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Ty Dolla Sign too, man. Ty Dolla Sign is really like, really. He, I mean, he's not slept on. Like he's he's popular, but he doesn't get enough credit like, though. He's he really doesn't. He's a great writer and a great producer. Like he's, very he's, he's he's really dope. Um, knowledge, that dude who did some beats on. Uh, he, he's been Don't around throw. for a minute. Yeah, Stones Throw. He did some beats on uh, that the new Kendrick. Like he's 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 a beast. Yeah, he was actually the last time I just seen him, he was on the uh, Action Bronson. He was on the. I action. know. Yeah, he was. I was watching that with my friends, and I was that? like, oh, nice, yeah. "Yeah, I almost, I was tripped. Yeah, I was, was tripping hilarious. out. I was like, yeah, that was hilarious." Yeah, knowledge but. is dope. I like what he's. I like what he was. He's been doing with um, uh, what's the guy's name? I can't think of his name right now. Um. And I really like this guy too. Uh, the guy that just signed with uh, Dr. Dre. Oh, Anderson Pac. Anderson Pac. Yeah, he's they, they've been making some really, really dope, dope music over there. I really like what they've been doing. Yeah, Anderson Pac and like BJ the Chicago Kid are two people. Are, are two people I would really, really love to get on. 
Man, oh, man, we're gonna try to make that happen, bro. We're gonna, we're gonna get you working <laughs> with that, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are, those yeah those so are those another those question things. I want to, you know, talk to talk to you about, man, is uh, you got like you got a lot going on with this with this tour. You, you're touring pretty heavy right now, right? Yeah, man. Yes, we are. This is gonna be my biggest tour that I've headlined that I've gone on in general, which is kind of a crazy thing to me. I was talking to my friend the other day. It's like most of the time when artists go out on a big tour, they go to, they open for someone or kind of like don't necessarily go out and headline their tour like that. I'm like, this, this is going to be my biggest tour and I'm headlining. I'm about to go to some, you know, some States and some cities I haven't even been to before. So it's going to be cool though. I'm excited. So, I mean, has it, have you been seeing the impact of it? Yeah, definitely. Um, We've been putting in a lot of work and just seeing people from different different cities and uh, states hit us up already. It's been a lot of like artists so far that have you know the people that are going to be on the shows and everything. So I think a lot of most of the impact will come after the shows and everything. Yeah. But because um, it is a challenge like to tour as an artist like myself, because it's not like it's not like I have a hit and I can be like, oh, this is you know what I'm saying, you know I have whatever on the radio so it's like so yeah you, check out. you go every they time gotta, that you perform you have to like you have to like prove yourself <laughs> prove yep 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 and it's like people got to be into it people got to come out so you know there's a lot of factors and it's not an easy thing to do to tour as an artist like myself but like the payoff is is really dope when it when it works out and i think this tour this is my first tour i've had help like I have a booking manager and a driver and all this stuff. It's like we're really this. This is gonna be dope. We have a van. We have hotels set up in every city. Like this is the first time we're actually gonna. It's gonna be nice. Is this like, something you put together to yourself? Me and this uh, radio station down here in San Francisco, the Madhouse. Uh, they I did a show down here, and they basically like contacted me after that, and we're like, "Yo, we want you to headline our summer tour." Da, da 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 da, and I ended up helping book some of it and do you know doing some of the press. Da 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 da. da. So, um, dope, so it's been me and, and this radio station have kind of collabed on it, but they they put in a lot of work. Like I wouldn't have been able to do it without them for sure. So I mean, like it, you look like you're pretty booked up, man. So I mean, how how, yeah. how far is this tour gonna go? <laughs> we start in uh, San Jose, which is about an hour out of Oakland. We shoot down to, uh, we go through LA, shoot down to San Diego, then uh, like Arizona, New Mexico, out to Las Vegas, um, go up to Idaho. I'm like, I'm messing up the routing completely. We hit New Mexico, uh, <laughs> Idaho. Um, we come back to Oregon, we go up to Washington, play in Seattle, Bellingham, back through Portland. Um, we hit Reno on the way back, and and then Sacramento and San Francisco and Oakland. We all all together, we have like twenty three dates in twenty or twenty three shows in twenty eight days. Ooh. So it's pretty it's a pretty hectic schedule, but it I'm, should be good. I mean, do you? Um, well, let me ask you this because you know these days everybody's got like their cell phones, and you know, like whenever you're like performing you're not just performing for like a hundred people in the room or a thousand people in the room now you're performing for like millions because of you know youtube and video online and all that does that make you nervous um nah i never you know i never really i never really have gotten nervous about it like honestly my live show like i really have so much fun in my live show and like i feel like until people see me live they really haven't like gotten the element of like me as a performer and a musician because like i've really been doing my live show for so long and it's like it's such it's a dope experience like it's really it's really a fun experience i never really like got nervous or thought about it like i i think the periscope thing and all that and broadcasting i think it's i think it's dope like i've never um never really never really worried about it to be honest with you man yeah i know um i mean are you stage diving I have stage dive, yeah, I have, I have, um, but not recently. The show's been a little bit smaller since I moved, but definitely stage dive before I, uh, back in Portland. So, I mean, what do you? What I mean, as far as like your live show, I mean, what what kind, what type of elements do you like to bring? Bring out, I guess. Uh, this this tour, I'm gonna do some live beat stuff. I'm gonna bring uh, a 
keyboard and I'm gonna do some live beats kind of like what I've been practicing with the music theory stuff and I'm gonna play some live like some live synths and some live keys and then um you know it's a lot of my songs it's a lot of crowd interaction some freestyle element comedy it's, it's it's funny man it's just like it's whatever happens you know I like I'm very live on the mic so it's really like whatever the vibe is of the night I'm very like it's you can't get caught slipping in one of my shows because I'm definitely going to call you out on the mic if you do it's it's a fun time like no matter what that's what's up man um yeah um as far as like you on tour I mean what's some of the places that you're like you're like I guess like excited to uh, to go check out. Man, I've never been to Vegas. Um, you never been to Vegas, so bro. I've never been to Vegas. I've never been. <laughs> I just, I'm not gonna lie. I've just been to Vegas for the first time last year. So. You're not alone. I ain't been there yet. So. Uh, <laughs> other, than, you know, I just been in the airport like in and out, like nothing serious. So I'm. We have a show in Vegas and we have a day off. And I already like kind of you know I've been like I have some some folks out there, and so I've been telling everyone I'm gonna be out there. So. Everyone's like, oh, we're about to get it in. Da, da, da. <laughs> so no, you, so Vegas, I'm excited for Vegas. Honestly, I'm excited to go to um, San Diego as well. I haven't been to San Diego. Oh, and I've San heard Diego's lots, nice. I heard lots of good things. Yeah. And then um, Seattle's always a really fun city for me. Um, and, uh, of course, going home to Portland, I got a day off. So I'm going to see my family. I'm going to try not to get in any trouble while i'm there for one day and um you know just just have a good show have a have a really good show in portland and like my sleeper city like the city that you wouldn't expect is going to be really dope that i guarantee is is salem oregon like all my last three or four times i've been to salem oregon we've had like some of the best shows there yeah man oregon is kind of like uh i mean the whole state you don't really hear too much about i mean Untapped. Yeah, <laughs> it's you got Portland. Yeah. You know, I've just started hearing about Salem a little bit more because you know I, I, I've been peeping Oregon scene a little bit more now because because of you and uh, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, like, what what is going on in Oregon for the most part? Like, what is if I'm driving through Oregon or I'm stopping by Oregon? Like, what am I going to run into? <laughs> out there? So right now, so in Portland, they just well, after I moved, they just leave the like weed is legally like one hundred percent legal. So you, in if Oregon? you're into that, yeah, you can walk into a oh, store. Yeah, you don't need a card or anything. You just walk into a store. You go hit you go hit the weed shop. People are just like like candy out there now. I guess it's just <laughs> ridiculous. Um, and then if you're into like the food scene is crazy like uh, there's so many like food carts and really dope restaurants and they also have like a really uh internationally known like craft beer scene like all these different types of you know sp- specialized beers and shit like people go crazy for that um and then a, a cool music scene like really diverse music like you're gonna hear like rock you're gonna hear hip-hop you're gonna hear jazz you're gonna hear like all types of stuff um, throughout the city, like venues and stuff like that, and like just a just a fun bar scene. Like you can go to Portland for the weekend and like do a bunch of stuff for cheap, get it in, have fun, go to strip, go to like five strip clubs in ten blocks. Like it's crazy. There's a lot. It's like hella strip clubs in downtown Portland. It's crazy. So I mean, do they got any like? Is there any like hood? Parts I just told you. I just told you all the horrible things you got. Like, I didn't tell you like one positive thing you could do. <laughs> I just told you all the bad stuff you could get into. Is there a hood in Portland? Well, I mean, um, is, it, is it? I know this. Is I, every? I know this. Everybody has your bad parts and your good parts. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I think yeah. sometimes people will, like will try to like because what happened was I was looking at something on YouTube uh, a while back and I seen somebody say something about Portland talking about Portland. And uh, yeah, or talking about, I think it was Portland. It was like a hood out there, and then somebody said something about some area. I forget what the area was, and they was like, "No, I think the Ville is what they were saying." Yeah, the Ville, the Ville. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, what that's what it the was. The Ville is like North Portland, and there's a lot of artists out right now that rep the Ville that are like some of the dopest in the in the city. Mike Mike Capes, Vinny Dwayne, Glenn Waco, um, and more. Um, the Ville is like north portland like real real north um which would be i guess like uh 
uh, like like project housing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's definitely like a tough neighborhood in Portland, and and that's almost like kind of like an untapped neighborhood a little bit. Um, there's like a lot of gentrification going on in North Portland where a lot of stuff is changing in St. John's and and um, neighborhoods out there where like that used to be the hood. Like when I was a kid, like. North Portland was a really dangerous, you know, it was like a dangerous place to go, kind of, or like, it just was, it just, people didn't go there as much, um, uh, and now it's like the, the trendy area, there's like lots of bars, lots of restaurants, lots of people moving in over there, and a lot of people are getting forced out to like the east side of Portland, which is like, has always kind of been um, lower economically and a little bit rougher. And like, for me, I grew up in like, I grew up in the Southeast. I grew up in North Portland and I grew up in Northeast Portland. So I grew up in like the three bad neighbor, I guess you would say like the three rougher neighborhoods of Portland, like all three of them, but they all have three different characteristics. So, Mm. but like when I was a kid, North Portland was like, was like, um, I guess more of like where the black people lived. And, like, Southeast was more, like, Mexicans, white people of lower economic. Like, my neighborhood, Lentz neighborhood, was, like, kind of a rough neighborhood. And then it started to change where, like, white people started moving to North Portland. People started getting pushed out to Southeast Portland. And now the hood, like, the more rougher areas are, like, Rockwood, like, 181st in Portland. Like, Southeast a little bit deeper south into the city and north portland northeast is becoming like a really nice part of town like they're like do you know it like a lot of major cities it's like the landscape of the city is changing and they're trying to push stuff expanding out on the ex on the skirts of the city you know and, and it's caused a lot of like tension in the city as in many cities, the same thing's happening here in oakland same thing's happening in San it's Francisco. going on in it's austin like, right now it's happening mm-hmm. in brooklyn um, yep, every city. Like I hear, I hear Austin is there's a lot going on because there's the tech boom there too. So yeah, it's like that's where there's a lot, lot of, of like they're trying they're trying to be the next Silicon Valley, right? And so I live and so here I'm like I deal with that. Like even living in Oakland, we deal with like a runoff of Silicon Valley. Like all the you know our rent is higher than San is higher than New York right now. Like the Bay is is bananas. Like the Bay Area is crazy. Yeah, meanwhile, uh, me and uh, Reefer are sitting here in this little-ass town with 130,000 people, uh, <laughs> like an hour away from Austin, and there's no gentrification happening. Uh, they're building up a lot, but it's just not it's yeah. not popping out here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, right, um, right. But, uh, it's crazy, man. I have this conversation so much with people just because it's like it really is happening in every different, every major city, like... Mm-hmm. DC, New York, Atlanta, like everywhere I go, everyone has the same problem. Yeah. You know, like everyone's going through the same issue. I think it's just the evolution of people, man. You know, we're, um, I mean, I'm going to be real with you. Like in the past, like six months, I started drinking green smoothies and uh, I've been educating myself on like just healthy alternatives and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I think I'm getting gentrified too a little bit. You know what I mean? But well, yeah, I, 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 like before like, it was like forty. And... Like, is that is that what that is, or is that just educating yourself to like health food? I mean, like, I'm is that? I'm like, what it, I can. I, but I it's mean, because because the smoothies came in your neighborhood, and then you're drinking them. Yeah, no, no, no. What's really crazy is the smoothies didn't come. They haven't came here. But what's been going on is because of the internet, right? Right. Uh, so you're you're, like, you're you're being exposed to so much more. Than, than you would before all that. You yeah. know what I mean? So I've been like, yeah. you know, I hear one person talking about it, and I hear a second another person. And I start YouTubing, sure. and then I'm, now I'm looking up recipes, and now I'm <laughs> now I'm like, you better get killed in your life, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. this is what it well, is. I think man. people are becoming very aware of, like, alternative ways to eat of food and stuff. Like, we were, I was having this conversation the other day, too. Like, when we were kids, we just didn't know we ate burger king and mcdonald's and like didn't know about how bad it was for us and now like parents are like wouldn't dare feed their kids that stuff you know it's crazy it's like the evolution of food yeah yeah it's interesting man that's crazy man uh so as far as um i mean right now man if there was if somebody was listening to this podcast and they were like i don't know anything about portland music uh who should who should they listen to three artists right now it's just i guess 
you know, beside yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm pretty sure they're gonna listen yeah, to you. I after wouldn't. I'm, I wouldn't, to I'm not one of those people. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Like you um, like taupe, taupe, and taupe. Taupe, taupe, and taupe. Nylon. Yeah. So okay. So I would say um, one of my favorite projects to come out of the town in the last year would probably be uh, Vinny Dwayne's uh, St. John Scholar. Really dope lyricist. Spent some time in Chicago and in North Portland, and just like has a really unique way with words and storytelling and is beyond his years and like wisdom and some of the stories he's told and like songs he's wrote and like really phenomenal beat choices as well um another artist coming out of portland that just moved there from la and she's like has a very unique sound and is most likely going to be doing some really big things here in the next year or so. Her name's uh, The Last Artful Dodger. Yes, I've been peeping can't, around. She's pretty dope. Yeah, yeah. I can't even, like, I don't I guess I could compare, like, a female Chance the Rapper or something, yeah. but I can't even, like, that's not even, doesn't even do her justice. She's really, really talented um, artist out of Portland. And... Man, I would have to say probably um, my boy Stuart Villain, too, just as far as like a really talented, uh, unique producer and rapper as well. People don't know he's really, really dope on the raps. Um, he's probably going to be releasing some songs soon. But, but like, man, he's produced for me, for satire, um, for people like Danny Brown, uh, oh. Ipsy Hustle. Like, he's really, really a talented, talented dude as far as like the beats go and just being a unique producer that's cool man that's cool yeah um well i mean uh i don't really have any more questions for you man i mean where can where can people find you if they want to get in touch with you and you know uh all social media is it's taupe um like i-t-s-t-o-p-e and then uh website it's taupe.com facebook taupe you know, Tope, Tope, Tope. <laughs> there goes the three Topes. No, if you make a yeah. song called Tope, 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 I'm going to need a check. Cause... You're going to need a check or something. Yeah. Or a verse Shout out or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so you, um, I got to. I mean, you got, some new, you got any, any new music coming anytime soon? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to drop at least one more video before I go on tour. I'm, I have a bunch of records that I'm, like, stacking up uh, for this new project, 3AM in Oakland. Uh, this summer, so that would be the follow up to Broke Boy Syndrome. Uh, I just dropped the latest uh, video, Better Place, on my YouTube, uh, on Trillmatic everywhere. You can find it. Um, yeah, I got a bunch of. I'm producing a album for this artist Sway Playmaker in Miami. I got a bunch of stuff coming up. But uh, that was one thing I wanted to ask you too, and, we, and I didn't get to ask you, but I'm asking you now. Uh, uh-huh. Broke Boy Syndrome. Yeah. What what does that mean per se? So there's so many different I guess there's so many different really like meanings to it. But like I guess it comes down to growing up with growing up like without things, like growing up without money, growing up without uh whatever opportunities and then like getting those things finally and then like messing them all up because you came from nothing like say I were to get on tomorrow because I came from like nothing having no money I'm like when I get a million dollars I'm about to lose it just like that because I went and just spent all the money and like I guess it's about like you have a sickness of like you're about to spend money or like do some do some dumb stuff to mess it up like there's really like there's really like different i don't know there's like a whole different themes of that album but it's kind of like autobiographical about me basically like growing up without uh, you know like positive influence without parents they really like were putting me on the right track making something of myself and then trying not to mess it all up once i like get there and it like deals with like money and just a whole bunch of like you know the the things that can hold you back in life like opportunity and a whole bunch of stuff but it's really like the theme is like you know you can do whatever you want as long as you as long as you stay focused on your goal like it doesn't matter where you come from like you can break the cycle like there's there's many different themes to it really that's cool man well y'all y'all heard it here first man uh yeah i know where to get uh get in touch with taupe it's at it's taupe everywhere on the internet it's taupe.com uh, we're definitely gonna link up some of that, some of the music that's been on Showmag.com from Tope 
in the uh, in the show notes here, man. And uh, Reef, you got anything else for Mister Tope? Uh, it was it was definitely a great conversation right now, and uh, yeah, man. It's it's another good, first man. for you also, you know, because yeah, no doubt, because it's a first for us, and now uh, you're the first on here, so. Yeah, thanks for reaching out. We're trying to um we're we're trying to do another tour actually in uh September, October. We're going to go out to A3C like down to San Diego and through Texas and everything. So maybe we can link something up and uh do something in person. Yeah, Definitely. yeah, absolutely, awesome. man. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be dope. All right, man. Um we appreciate you uh doing the interview, man, and y'all check out Tote, man. Peace out. All right, man. Peace. Thank you, guys. Thanks for listening to the Truth Be Told podcast. Be sure to subscribe and log on to Chillmatic.com for the latest in underground music, film, fashion, and more.